So on the, here, here's the first email. So this is from Beth to Helen, as I said, on the subject of film. And I'll just quickly read it out to you. I just got back from Kuala Lumpur where I met with Phil. As Phil's zone manager, I was surprised at how demotivated Phil has become. As you know, he is regarded by me and many of my colleagues in the zone as high potential. He's very polite, but it is clear he has found working with you difficult. I understand the pressure you are under at your end, that's in the States, but I don't think you understand the pressure his boss in Malaysia has been putting on him. We had a long talk. I think he believes he can deliver the results you need. I suggest a more supportive relationship will help to achieve this. What do you think about that email? <laughs> high, very high risk. Very high risk. I mean, of course, this is, this is also about the media. As I said, I mean, you know, conflict can come from many sources, but one, in this case, one very obvious reason is the choice of email as a way to communicate. Uh, and you know, many of our participants rely too much on email. I, I rely too much on email. Um, so what happens is that Helen gets this email and she replies to Beth and she copies it, she copies it to the project leader, Manfred. And she says, Dear Beth, I was shocked to hear from you. This is the first time during this project you have emailed me. It is to tell me how to do my job. Phil and I are working to turn around his side of the project. I don't think your intervention will help. Certainly, I have never been accused of not being supportive. So you can sort of feel, you can, you can feel the tension, tension rise. And, and it rises to the extent that Helen is not happy just leaving it there. She thinks, you know, she sends off the email, Nothing happens within five minutes. She said, bloody hell, right? Okay, I'm going to get on the phone. And who does she phone? She phones Manfred. And that's what I'd like to look at now uh, and just see how this uh, plays out. So here is a call uh, between Helen and Manfred. <coughs> Poor old Manfred, as you can see, as you can see from his jacket, he's just about to leave the office. There's a, there's a time zone. Obviously, Manfred's in Germany. Helen is in the States. Okay. Okay, so I just need to press on. Ah, no picture. Sorry. <clears throat> it's here, but it's not on there. Okay. D just a moment. I'll go to a, another source of it. That's my, that's my, um, that's my, that's my grandson. I didn't, I didn't, yeah, I didn't, I didn't do this deliberately. I promise to, to curry sympathy with you. But actually, this, this is a, this is a very big moment for me. But in September, my first grandson, Rishi, was born. So there, he, there he is. So I'll just try and find the video here. Uh, and um, hopefully it will play from here. Um, <clears throat> Steinmeier? Manfred, this is Helen. <laughs> ah, um, Good evening, Helen. Um, oh, good morning to you. Did you see the email? Um, uh, uh, which, which email? The one from Beth and my reply. Um, um, yes, I, I do. So, what do you think? She has no right to tell me how to do my job. I, I, I don't think she wants to do that, Helen. I don't see what else she wants. God's sake. I suggest a more supportive relationship. Um, I think she's just looking uh, after Phil. You know, he's a bit of a... Golden boy, is he? Well, look, I'm not prepared to work on this project if she's going to shoot at me from the sidelines. Um, I'm sorry? You have to tell her to back off and mind her own business. Um, 
hell. And these projects are always difficult. You know, the conflict between local needs and, and project demands. And perhaps we ought to have clarified the roles in the clarify beginning. Clarify the roles? Look, my role is to get the PX-52 launched in the States. Phil's role is to get it off the ground in Malaysia. We're behind, but we're working on it. We don't need Beth to butt in. <coughs> OK. So I'll just, um, I'll just go back to uh, where I was. So, the reason I wanted to show you that is just to get us to reflect on what we mean by mindfulness and what we mean by push and pull. As far as mindfulness is concerned, um, obviously, you know, to manage the conflict, what we need to encourage in our participants and ourselves is to set back. <coughs> and Helen is, is one of the extremely difficult. Because yeah, she's under lots of stress, she's under lots of pressure. Um, but we, you know, our job, our job, I feel, uh, is very much trying to hold a mirror up to our participants and get them to reflect on how they're coping. I mean, and conflict is very, very difficult. Why, why is conflict very difficult? Because most of us, fortunately, don't have very much experience of dealing with it. So when it does come along, we don't have the tools to deal with it. And so, actually, so the conclusion we often reach as a result of that is to try and avoid it, kick it under the table. But, you know, here, poor old Manfred, who clearly doesn't have the tools to deal with it, and has probably very little experience of dealing with someone like Helen, um, you know, he's struggling. He's really struggling. So, so we, can use, we, can use these, we can use these videos as a bridge uh, to encourage our participants to think about their own mindfulness, their own abilities to step back and distance themselves. And we can also get them to then move on to think about this push-pull thing. So, I mean, what's happening here? There's no pulling from actually either side. They're both pushing. Pushing because what, you know, Manfred is just sort of saying, well, what you need to do is think about that. What Helen's doing is what you need to do is this, this, this. So push, push, push. Um, and I think, you know, if I was to uh, encourage Manfred in this situation, what I would suggest is Manfred should say to Helen, it's not a good moment, uh, you know, this is not a good moment for it, I'm going to call you back tomorrow. I need time to think about this, I need time to look at your email, I need time to talk to Beth, I need time to talk to Beth, then I'll call you back tomorrow. It might not help Helen, she might be still furious, but, but you know, that, that ability to step back reflect and then take action and think about what's the best way to do it is what I, what I feel that what I, I try to help my participants with. Okay, so that's, um, that's one example of, um, of conflict and the mindfulness and the push and the pull. Um, I just wanted the third point on my agenda was, was attitudes and I said um, I'm not going to talk a lot about attitudes but you know finally attitudes are the most critical thing in terms of developing our participants. And uh, what do I mean by attitudes? I mean uh, openness, curiosity, but those sorts of things. And it's not our role uh, often to put those at the top of the agenda when we talk to our clients and say, OK, I'm going to take your executives and I'm going to make them more curious and more open-minded. However, however, hopefully, the way we go about these things will lead to that. And I always show, increasingly, I show my uh, participants this little quote from Gandhi, which I like a lot. Um, so I'll just share this with you. Um, I do not want my house to be walled in on all sides and my windows to be stuffed. I want the cultures of all the lands to be blown about my house as freely as possible but I refuse to be blown off my feet by any. I like this, I like this because obviously Gandhi, for me what Gandhi is saying there is that it's extremely important to be open and curious about other cultures, um, but it's also important to be confident about your own culture or your own, your own values. And I think that's, that's again a little bit the push and the pull. We, we need to encourage our participants you know, if, if, a company, if a company sends 
I don't know, a German to work in Venezuela. Why, why did they do that? They partly do that because they hope that they will learn something about the way the Venezuelans do business and adapt to that. But they also send them because he, that, that German's got something about the way he's done business that he can share. So he needs to be confident about what he's got, what he's got to share, and to be open uh, to where he's going. So I, 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 always, I always like to show that. Okay, so those are the three, the, three ch the three areas of challenge, which I think you know, we need to work on. Building knowledge, developing skills, and perhaps under the surface, working on attitudes. Um, and now I'd like to finally just um, share with you just one or two examples of the solutions 